Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar hosted by InTouch in partnership with the Calder Group. Um, Calder Group have been a partner of InTouch now for just under one year and have helped many of our members with succession planning so far. Today's webinar will give you a little bit of insight on how best to pass on the wealth you create and the challenges that you might face. Hosting today's webinar, we have Tom Buck, who is the Managing Director of the Calder Group, who has 20 years experience in this field. So I'm sure there'll be some great hints and tips for you today. After today's webinar, um, you'll get a copy of the slides if you've been watching the webinar live. Um, if you are watching a recording of the webinar, please do just email in customercare at intouchnetworks.com and we'll be able to send you a copy and Tom's details as well if you want to get in touch if you have any further questions. Throughout the webinar today, you will see there is a little question box um, at the bottom of the slides. If you've got any questions for Tom, please do just pop your questions in here. He'll do his best to answer as many as he can throughout today's webinar. If we don't get through all the questions, we can follow up with you after the webinar today. Um, so please do pop any questions you have in there. Um, and so on that note, I'll hand you over to Tom to run the webinar. So welcome, Tom. Morning, Sophie. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, as Sophie said, my name is Tom Buck. I'm the owner and managing director of the Calder Group. Um, we specialise, as you can see in the slide, we help clients to create, manage and protect wealth. And when we say protect wealth, that's from beyond the grave. So passing it through the generations. In terms of today's seminar, we're going to go through um, three areas and we're just going to touch on some of the work that we do. Um, because if we try to cover everything we can do for clients in terms of uh, succession planning, then quite frankly, we'll be here for a few weeks, not a few minutes. So we're going to just talk very quickly about succession planning and wealth succession for the modern family, touch on an option and something that we do for our clients who have rental properties, and then we're going to touch on the truth about the million pound allowance, because you'll probably see quite a bit in the press coming up talking about the million pound allowance in the new tax year and we'll just go through the reality of how that actually works and what that really means. So in terms then of the Calder Group, just to cover about who we are and how we work, within the group we have two companies. We have Calder Finance Midlands Limited and that's a fully authorised and regulated um, independent financial advice company. And for our clients there, that's why we help to create and manage their wealth. So using the usual tools and products of pensions, investments, we look at tax efficient investments, life cover, business protection, and, and fully authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. So uh, everything we do is checked and we make sure that we're behaving in the right way to put our clients at the heart of everything that we do. We also then have Calder Succession, and that's our legal firm. So again, that's using the tools of the legal profession, using wills, trusts, inheritance, tax planning, um, looking at ways of protecting the assets, doing work for our business clients. We do a lot of, of work for family companies uh, because we're a family company ourselves. So we, we know the issues that come up and the problems that many have. So we're able to transfer that across. We also have an in-house solicitor who works with us to make sure the planning is up-to-date, accurate, and meets all the legal requirements and really making sure it works for our client. We do it in-house in that way because we found trying to outsource everything to solicitors, to other people, it just falls down. Everyone's got their own way of doing things and we want to help our clients control, manage, and make sure that everything works seamlessly. So as far as clients are concerned, it's all done, all sorted, and they can rest at ease. And then it's just a management and making sure that the governments of the day don't make too many changes going forward. So let's get straight into succession planning and the basics. Now, when we talk about succession planning, I've had quite a few people who say, well, I don't understand that. We understand estate planning, but succession planning, well, it's the same thing. It's just talking about how you pass your assets from your estate to the ones you love, or maybe the ones you don't, it depends on, on your circumstances, but passing it through the generations on to the next. And you're looking there at the three main reasons why our clients actually take action and put things in place. First of all, the modern world does not have any more very, very few uh, nuclear families. The 2.5 children, mum and dad who meet at 16 and uh, stay married throughout life, tends to be disappearing. 
we're getting more and more people with children from previous relationships, people on second or third marriages. We've got the change in civil partnerships, same-sex marriage, more cohabitation. It's becoming more and more of an issue. So passing that money on, directing it in the way you want it to go, well, that's actually more complicated than you think. If you take in a, a scenario of someone on second marriage or second relationship, children from a previous one, well, already you're sitting there going, when they die, everything they assume will pass to their new spouse, their new partner. What about it going down to the children from the first relationship? Will they be missing or will they not? What will what will be the situation? Then there's a case of protection. So making sure that you protect the assets that you have, making sure that once you've passed away, they go to the next generation and carry on from there. So how do we make sure they don't disappear out of the estate? How do we make sure that the tax man and everyone else doesn't get it? And actually tax planning is quite simply quite low down on uh, on a lot of our clients' um, objectives when we first sit down with them for the very simple reason that, well, the others are more important. But we'll come on to how we can do the tax planning and the reality and what that actually means. So what are the protection needs? First of all, as I've already mentioned, well, the second marriages. Uh, the growth industry in the wedding industry at the moment is actually for those over 60. And there's stats coming out now that show that um, a lot of people over the age of 60 are marrying again. So particularly men, we don't like being alone. We probably can't work the iron in the washing machine. So we tend to get married later in life after the first relationship has either ended through death, divorce, whatever it may be. Then there is divorce. Now, let, let's be honest, we all know that for a lot of people, divorce is a very expensive thing to go through. So when you pass your money on to, to the children, and we all know the divorce rates in the UK at the moment are very high, well, that is a time when suddenly the spouse, the in-law is looking around going, actually, I really don't like you. I can now afford to go. Right, I'm out of here. Because suddenly there's a, a large amount of money normally wipes out debts and puts both parties in a much better position to walk away. So that becomes a risk to where does your money go and will your children continue to receive it? And then finally, there's the issue of financial problems for the next generation. Now, with the best will in the world, sometimes events overtake your children and grandchildren that can lead them into those financial difficulties. It can be a business failure. It can be actually actions of a spouse. We've We've dealt with uh, a, a case where the husband didn't realize the wife was signing loan agreements in both names and created a huge financial issue. So it can happen. It does happen. And with careful use of wills and lifetime settlements, which we'll go and talk about in a moment, you can provide protection that can minimize the impact of, uh, of a financial issue for your children. There is, of course, most people then say, what about long-term care? What about the cost of that? Well, one, it's illegal to deliberately deprivate your estate to avoid it. And two, you have to have that question. Do you want to put yourself into a position where the only thing that can be afforded by your family is probably one of the worst care homes in the area? Or do you want to plan so you can actually afford it and move forward? Then there's the tax you worry about too late. It's amazing how many people we see in their 70s and 80s suddenly realizing that they have an inheritance tax side. The reality, only 5% of estates in the UK in the last 10 years have actually paid inheritance tax. So it's not a major issue. But let's take a look. How do you know if it's going to be an issue for you? Well, first of all, you need to work out what you're worth. So spookily, it's all your assets, and that's worldwide assets. Take any debts. You get an allowance of 325,000 per person, so not that off. So if you've got a million pounds, you're now looking at the state of 675. Well, you're going to pay 40% of that, or your estate is going to pay 40% of that on death. Now, again, as I say, a lot of our clients, the main driver is direction, making sure the money goes where they want it to go, and make sure it's protected for the long term. And we're dealing with a case at the moment where the clients don't actually have an inheritance tax problem, but they're about to inherit, and that is going to cause the problem. And this is where we do intergenerational tax planning. It's not just your own circumstances we need to think about. It's what about your children? What about your grandchildren? 
if you're successful, it's highly likely your children are going to be successful in terms of financial wealth as well. Well, do they really need that money passing to you to add to an issue where you may be able to avoid inheritance tax, but they can't? So, one way that we work with our clients is we create family trusts, the intergenerational wealth protection through a direct settlement. There was a period a few years ago where solicitors were, were writing wills with will trusts in them. Um, and then in about 2007, 2008, when the inter, interspousal um, allowance came in, that side of death because people went, oh, you don't need it anymore. We've got 650,000 now as a couple. Thank you very much. Job done. I would disagree. If we're talking about protecting of the assets, so we're not talking necessarily tax, not for, for the initial couple, but for further down the line, well, why would you pass your assets to the next generation directly when it's going to cause them a problem? Either divorce, long-term care, inheritance tax, whatever it may be. So we work by creating direct settlements with the clients during the lifetime. First of all, it means it's there, it's settled. We register it with HMRC, and the new rules say it has to be anyway, but it means that you have a living, breathing trust document waiting for you. It's private, it's confidential. Wills are, as soon as you die, they're public ownership. You can go online, there's a website you can search if you want to see Princess Diana's will. You've got the pleasure of doing that. A trust is confidential. It is kept. And this is why HMRC have looked at it and gone, we've tweaked trust, but we're not changing it fundamentally. You can use the nil eight band and you can make it potentially transfer into the into the trust. So again, as long as you live for seven years, you can do that repeatedly. Great way of passing wealth on to the next generation. And the beneficiaries can be your spouse, they can be your children, they can and it can flow for 125 years. So it's a great way of providing intergenerational asset protection and wealth. If you look at someone like the Sainsbury's, if you look at the Guinness family, if you look at the richest people in the UK, this is the kind of structure they use. You can even have control of beneficiaries receiving income, capital. You can do loans from it, so you protect it that way. And all you need to do initially is stick a £10 note in the back. So if you ever fancy stapling a note to it, this is the way of doing it. You stick a £10 note in the back. And it's great because we can then use it with our clients for lifetime planning. We've used it recently to allow a client to set up a grandson with no mortgage, but at the age of 24, moving in with his uh, his girlfriend, his partner, she was a little bit worried about what happens if that relationship ends, so we've used the direct settlement to do it. It's a good starting point. It's a great way of protecting the assets, and if it's used correctly and early enough, it's a great way of actually minimizing any death duties. So that's well and good. That's a good starting point for our clients, but what about those who have big property portfolios. We know there's a lot out there. Um, we have deal with clients from one or two properties up to 10, 20, 30, 40. Well, we've had the hit over the last few years. We've had rental income issues, new legislation, loss of mortgage interest relief, stamp duty, land tax changes. And you've got to understand that residential property, there's no inheritance tax relief if it's an investment. It then raises the question, well, how do you distribute, how do you get rid of those assets without being caught by the capital gains tax that happens to be there? And what about the loss of income control when you pass assets to children? Again, we're back to the same issues. We've come across a client where they didn't realize they'd given 10% of their property portfolio to the children to pay for their way through a university. Makes perfect sense. Use their personal allowance. However, what they hadn't thought about is the issue that those children, if they get in a relationship, they actually owned 10% of a £5 million property portfolio. Makes their children extremely attractive and not necessarily to the right people. And where do you get advice? And I, I started dealing with property uh, uh, landlords about eight, nine years ago, and we found that accountants quite act, quite normally, they, they don't have the time to deal with it. It's reactive. Accountancies tend to look backwards and go, this is where you've been. We're trying to work with people to go, this is where you are, and this is where you want to get to. So let's plan going that forward. 
financial advisors. Um, most people get into property because they can't stand financial advisors and they can't stand the products that they work with. So regulated options don't tend to be suitable and most financial advisors, apart from helping you to create the portfolio and get the mortgages and protect that from death, then go, that's it, I can't do any more. And then there's the listers when it comes to wills and how do you pass this on. It's the tax angle. Planning's therefore very generic, don't really understand the tax, and that causes a problem. So add that, if you try and deal with all three, you'll get all of them coming up with different options and different solutions, and that's not really what you want. So within the quarter group, we have all three under one roof, and that enables us to work in the right way. First of all, we look at the right corporate structure. And believe it or not, the right corporate structure can have some great succession planning objectives. Um, now, I've come across over the years now quite a few of our clients who have limited companies for their properties going forward, but then have huge property portfolios set outside. I think the best I ever saw was a client with a, a £1.6 million portfolio. They had a limited company set up by their accountant in the last six months, and all they were doing was taking 10% management fee to reduce the tax on that. Well, there's so much more that we can do. It starts then with where are you at the moment? Have you incorporated? Does it make sense to incorporate? And how would you go about it? The key question there is really, what are you trying to achieve? What do you want to get out of it? And I'm going to go through quickly one of the options that we work with with our clients when we do incorporate and do it correctly. It's called, well, we call it the Freezer Trust, and yes, it does exactly what it says on the, on the, on the name, but it's a great way of doing some long-term planning. So let's take a, an example here. We have a um, husband and wife. They have rental properties. They purchase them for a million. They've got a £2 million current value, and it's producing an income of 300000 a year that they do not want to let go. The initial problem there you're looking at is there is going to be um, a capital gains tax issue. And, well, how then do you move money into a family investment company without paying that capital gains tax? There is a way. And just an aside, um, I've been reading this morning that HMRC are apparently looking at family investment companies. We are keeping a broad eye on that to make sure that whatever happens on that, we're able to react with our clients correctly. Well... Mum and Dad have the option of rolling over the properties into the family investment company. When I say rolling over, they can either give them straight in and they get something called rollover relief, which means that the capital gains tax is frozen at that point. The properties are revalued on the date they go into the, into the uh, business. But for Mum and Dad, there's no immediate capital gains tax to pay. And the great thing about capital gains tax, it dies with you when you pass away. So it's a great way of freezing the capital gains tax at that point. You can decide you're going to sell the properties to it for a cash value. You can decide you're going to loan them. There are options. And again, with every case, we tend to look at a combination. There's no one silver bullet. There's lots of things that can happen. Within that business, you create two shares. You have a fixed share value. Uh, fixed shares, so they can be your A shares. Mum and Dad own them. They now have a fixed value or whatever it may be. Spookily, we tend to use something like the nil rate band, so we'll fit those at about 650000 The rest of the value goes into growth shares. That's where all future growth happens. So in this case, we're talking $1.3 million. Well, that's where they can grow to 2.8, 4.1, whatever it is in the future. The great thing there is they go into the trust for a family. Now, the particular trust that we use gives immediate inheritance tax savings, so you've immediately got it outside of your estate, and we're talking property here. We're not talking any other assets, although they can be used. You've also got control because mum and dad are still trustees, and don't forget we're going to write it in such a way that mum and dad keep the income. So they have managed to reduce their inheritance tax liability put in place some proper succession planning. They're able to put the value into trust for their children, which means that if their children get divorced, the right kind of trust means it's not going to be included. And the shares can be amended at any point. You just need to go through the usual corporate structure and corporate process. So it's a great way in the right circumstances to manage that value, manage the money through, 
and keep control. So on this particular one, you've got great, great tax savings and efficiency going on. And you're not doing anything that's illegal. You're not pushing the boundaries. All you're doing is you're creating a vehicle to move assets through the generations while maintaining control. You get CGT deferral on existing gains at 28%. And you're saving inheritance tax. Again, the trust, you can use that 325. If you decide you're going to actually want capital back, well, you sell some shares back to the business. So a great way, again, getting money out. You get tax efficiency on the redistribution of income and the residential nil rate band can be managed appropriately. So there are huge, huge benefits in doing this, but I'll reiterate, in the right circumstances, and this is where we sit down with the clients and we work through. To get there, HMRC have a tick list of things that must be in place that you must do, but the great thing about this is actually HMRC will tell you whether it's going to work or not before you do it. And that's something we've done on a number of occasions. So it just shows, and I say this is just one option that we have with our landlords, that there are ways of maintaining control, holding onto that property portfolio, and still managing, it, managing to get it through the next generations. So let's talk about, I mentioned the residential nil rate band. And at the start, we talked about that wonderful million pounds allowance. When this first came in, in the summer budget of 2015, it was everywhere. Lots of discussion, and it was the most convoluted, most awful bit of legislation in reality. But it managed to get the Tories to a point where they made their manifesto pledge of years ago of a million pounds for all. It enabled them to, shall we say, not avoid a tax take. Tax take has actually gone up over the years that this has been introduced. And at the moment, for 2030, we're still anticipating that the tax take from inheritance tax will be about £10 billion. So, yes, not a huge tax, but it is still a big tax. So, George Osborne, by 2021, everyone would have a million pounds. Um, basically, this is what he said. You can pass a million pounds onto your children free of inheritance tax, no more inheritance tax on the family home. Yeah, um, we'll now go into the reality. First of all, I mentioned earlier, everyone's got a £325,000 allowance for inheritance tax. That is the only allowance you are automatically allowed to claim. So I've had a few clients where we've talked about this who have gone, Tom, I've got a million pounds. Actually, it depends on the circumstance. It makes getting advice more and more important over the years because if you make the assumption, this could cost you an awful lot of money. So this is where HMRC we're trying to get to. This is where George Osborne planned. You have an estate of a million pounds. You automatically get your £325,000 no weight band, and that's for husband and wife or civil partners. And then you have £175,000 each of no weight band on your property, which spookily comes to a million pounds. So congratulations, you have managed to pass a million pounds of wealth onto the next generation. Let's start looking at what you need to do and some of the issues. First of all, you've got to have a property which is a residence within your estate. Now, that raised quite a few issues of, well, what if I've sold and I've downsized? Well, they put convoluted rules in place that means you can include the proceeds of the sale. But, and there's always a big but with HMRC and tax, you've got to demonstrate, you've got to provide the evidence. Do not just assume they will take your word for it they will want the appropriate sales documentation and confirmation of value. If you have two residencies, well, your executives, your personal representatives can choose one that fits. So simple and straightforward enough. Most of us have a house. Most of us will have proof of sale somewhere. So, yeah, what's the issue? Well, then we start talking about the £2 million taper allowance. Now, this is where HMRC and the legislation have made things, shall we say, awkward. So for every two pounds that your estate is over two million pounds, you lose a pound of the, the threshold. So it means you can get to 2.7 million as a couple, and suddenly that wonderful million pound inheritance tax threshold has gone out of the door. 
It simply doesn't exist. You cannot claim it. So it actually makes the situation of what you own and the value at the point of death even more important. So if you're at 3 million, you've lost it all. If you're at 2.1 million, you've lost some. If you're at 1.95, now is the time to start planning because you're about to lose it all. And there are ways we can mitigate that and circumnavigate the problem. But to make it even worse, assets that do not pay or do not or have exemption rather from inheritance tax actually count to the value of your estate. And I'm using here an example. Yes, I've tweeted a little bit, I'll be honest, but it makes a point. And spookily, I'm just dealing with someone who is very similar to this situation. So you own shares in your own business or a qualifying trading business that's worth about £2 million. You then only have a £1 million in personal assets through your property and investments. Well, the qualifying trading business does not pay inheritance tax. That in the current legislation will pass on to the next generation with no tax to be paid. The personal assets of a £1 million, you would think, should qualify for all the allowances available. But because you have that £2 million property, they don't. As far as Her Majesty's revenue and customer is concerned, you have a three million pounds estate. That is over two million pounds, so therefore you lose your residential nil rate band, and the, your beneficiaries will have to pay inheritance tax on everything above 650,000. So the good news there is you get the pleasure of, or your executives will get the pleasure of writing a cheque to Her Majesty's Revenue and Custom within six months of your passing, because otherwise they're starting to pay interest, So, and they are personally liable as well. So if you're an executor, you may want to have a quiet word with the person you're an executor for to make sure that you're not paying more than you absolutely need to, and you're not on the hook for a large sum of money. But in this scenario... £140,000 of unnecessary and avoidable inheritance tax is going to be paid on the estate. And that counts for stocks and shares that qualify for business relief. Anything that you still own that potentially will not pay inheritance tax or will not be liable to inheritance tax on your death is going to be part of that issue. So, if you've taken action before and you've made investments that minimise your inheritance tax, you need to look to make sure your family is still going to be able to claim that £1 million. So the reality of the £1 million um, annual allowance doesn't exist. Not for everyone. Oh, and also I've come across several people where the value of the house is below 300000 but they've been incredibly successful elsewhere well, guess what? You can't then claim the full allowance. You can only claim the value of the property you're claiming against. So if you do really well and you've got a million pounds in investments or 750,000 investments and a 250,000 pound value of a house, well, bad news, you're not going to be able to claim the million pounds allowance because you don't have the correct asset to claim the allowance against. So, if you read anything now coming up to the change in the tax year that says the million pounds allowance is taking place and congratulations, it's coming in, I'm afraid the truth is you need to look very carefully, get advice and check not only what you're worth, but what you hold and who holds it. Again, there are scenarios out there where one partner passes away, but they only had 200,000 in their name. The other partner may own all the property, all the business, and if that's more than two million on second death, you don't get the allowances. So, million pounds is there. If you plan right, plan early, and make sure you do what you need to do. Now, I say within half an hour there, we've just talked very quickly about some of the areas that we work in. I could go on for hours about what we can do and what needs to be done. The caveat on all this is obviously the usual one, which is you need to take advice. If you take action just on listening to this, you could end up actually causing other issues further down the line. So it is changing. We're expecting the budget on the 11th of March with hopefully the same Chancellor of the Exchequer as we've got now. Uh, we are expecting them to look at inheritance tax. There's a white paper out at the moment um, 
to be honest, it will take years for it to come through anyway. But they're looking at simplifying it, which is great. We are expecting them to look at the family investment companies. But again, it's one of those that they may or may not. The worst thing you can ever do when it comes to succession planning is say, I'll wait because I've heard. If you know when you're going to pass away, that's fantastic. If you know exactly which government's going to be in and exactly what they're going to do, that's fantastic. If you're not sure on either, you're best taking action purely on the basis of it gets things sorted at that moment in time. So I wanted to make sure we had plenty of time to go through questions. Um, so if there are any questions, please feel free to fire them at you. If you would rather have a conversation um, with me, because obviously I'm aware that not everyone in this area wants to talk about their own personal circumstances and their own uh, wealth and exactly what they want to do. It's probably not the right forum. Plus, we're all British. So, um, yeah, we don't like talking about that kind of thing. Our contact details are there. And as Sophie said earlier, um, in touch, have them. We're on the, uh, on the partnership page. So we're more than happy to take some initial inquiries, deal with some initial questions, we can do a free initial consultation to have a more in-depth discussion rather than really look at some of the issues. Um, but for the presentation for the moment, um, I think I've got everything I wanted to go through this morning. So it's uh, over, to, uh, over to you to see if, uh, if there's anything I can answer for you at the moment. And yeah, at the moment it looks like we've got everyone happy, Sophie. It looks like you might have covered everything everyone needs to know, Tom, which is a good <laughs> sign for the webinar. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, as, uh, as, definitely. So, as Tom said, uh, it's probably got a lot of you thinking about what the next steps are, and it's a very trippy, tricky topic. So, if you do want some advice, then please do get in touch with Tom and the team, or um, you can get in touch with InTouch, and we will pass over uh, Tom's details for you. Uh, as mentioned, we will send out the webinar slides to those, watch, those watching live. And if you do want a copy of the slides, just email in customercare at intouchnetworks.com or you can email Tom on inquiries at thecaldergroup.co.uk. Um, we do ask for just a short little feedback um, survey at the end of the webinar. We just quick um, rate in from one to five. Um, well, I think there may be a, a quick question that's just come in, Tom, if you're happy to answer that one before we go. Uh, yep, can you talk more generally about succession planning for a family business? Um, yes, um, and I could talk for hours without uh, any problem on that. Um, it depends what the, uh, what the question is in terms of succession planning for a family business. Um, it's, it's a case of are you looking to keep it going as a, a, a business going forward? Um, are you looking at, right, I want to bring the kids in at some point? Um, it's an issue we're going through within the Calder Group at the moment because my daughter Clara works in the business. My son doesn't want to work in the business. He couldn't think of anything worse, bless him. Um, and we're having to look at right, how do we make sure that the wealth within the business goes correctly down the line. So we're in the process of uh, sorting out our own shares and looking at the appropriate trusts around that so that both my son and daughter can benefit, but the business stays intact um, also, uh, the daughter is, uh, is due to get married in the next two years, and as much as I think my uh, potential son-in-law is a really nice guy, I don't want to run the risk of him deciding in 10 years' time he doesn't want to be married to, to my daughter and takes a cut of the business as well. So we talked about family investment companies and the use of the freezer trust. That is an option we can look at, but it really does depend. Are you planning on selling the business yourself? Do you want to stay in it? your children coming through are they actually uh, uh, capable of dealing with it um okay i've got a little bit more thank you um kept going as a business going forward second to third generation directorships uh commercial property that's um right yeah so if if you're going to keep it going depending on whether it class it's classed as a trading um, business for HMRC purposes, then quite frankly, there's no issue passing it on under current legislation. It will pass forward going going uh, under the current rules, so it will qualify potentially. Worth just checking that out as something we can sit down and work with you. The caveat to that is if it has large cash holdings or other assets that don't qualify, it might not get full 
um, business relief, so there might be some inheritance tax to pay. It's then a case of how much protection do you want to put in place for the next generation, in which case there are ways that we can do that through amending share classes, use of trusts, as I say. Um, we've got one, is commercial property that's um, included in your overall assets? Yes, it is. Um, depending on how it's held, it may or may not qualify for business relief, but we go back to, and I'm just going to uh, jump back on the slides here, we go back to that slide there eventually. Although it may qualify, it's added to the value of your estate, so if you're looking to get the maximum um, tax-free or allowances on death, that could have quite a detrimental impact in the fact that it might mean you may not qualify and it pushes your estate over that £2 million threshold. Okay. Um, have we got any more questions? Uh, I know I probably waffled slightly about the uh, family business, but it's very difficult to be precise without knowing the uh, exact details. But there are things you can do, and I say it depends on what it, what it uh, what it actually does and how much cash etc you have and exactly what you're trying to uh, to sort out for the family um, well, uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. yeah I think we've got uh, I think we've got those particular questions answered so I'm just trying to see if there's anything else I can yep there's nothing else coming through at the moment um, okay. hopefully well, that answers I've, I've it Perfect. And as mentioned, if anybody does have any further questions, please do get in touch with Tom. Um, as you mentioned, it's, he's happy to do a free, quick consultation with you on, on any questions you may have. Um, so we'll make sure everything's sent out to those watching live. And just as a reminder, if you're watching the recording, please just email Tom or In Touch Network, and we'll get all the information passed over to you. So thank you very much for today, Tom. It was a very, very useful webinar, and I'm sure we'll speak to you soon. Absolutely, Sophie. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye.